Hey everyone, welcome to Golden Health Method. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about uh, statins and muscle pain that could be associated with it. Uh, so just yesterday actually, I was having a patient that came to me in the office complaining that ever since he took the new statin medication for his high cholesterol levels, he's been having these like muscle aches and pains, especially in his back. Um, it was concerning to him because he had a um, actually a collapse of the vertebrae. He had a compression fracture uh, about three years ago, so he was wondering if that's what the pain was from. It turned out to be just muscle pain, uh, and it came on quickly after the statin was prescribed to him. Uh, what's interesting about muscle pain with statins for cholesterol is that if you look at different research, you'll see different results or findings on how much muscle pain they actually cause. If you look at what's called industry-funded research for the statins, that means research that was done by the companies that are selling the statins, by the pharmaceutical companies themselves, you'll see it's like less than 10%, sometimes 1% or 2% of people have uh, muscle pain. If you look at some randomized controlled trials that are not funded by the pharmaceutical companies, uh, it jumps up to around 20 to 40% of patients can have muscle pain uh, with the statin use. And then if you look at what's called observational studies, so they're less well controlled, some of those observational studies show that up to 60% of people can have muscle pain associated with statin use. Um, I think that the RCT, the randomized controlled trials, could be a little bit low just because the people don't always realize that the aches and pains that they're feeling are actually coming from the statins because it could take some time before the muscle pain actually starts after taking the statins for the cholesterol. Now, before we go into what you can do about this, how to prevent this, how to treat this, let's just talk a little bit really quick about why the muscle pain happens in the first place. Um, th there's two reasons. Most people know the first reason, or if they ask a doctor, uh, if they ask a primary care physician, he might be able to tell them the first reason this happens. And that is because when the statins block the pathway of cholesterol getting produced in the body. They also block, as a side effect, the pathway for CoQ10 to be produced in the body. Now, CoQ10 is a major, not only an antioxidant that is needed for all of our cells in our body, but especially metabolically active cells like muscle and brain tissue. But the CoQ10 also plays an important role in the electron transport chain. So what that means, it, it plays a role in the muscle cells being able to produce enough energy to you know make strong contractions so they don't fatigue and so that they can produce the energy required to repair themselves so muscle pain or myalgia can be a side effect of statin use but so can muscle weakness and lack of endurance and things like that because you can't the muscles can't produce the same amount of energy without that coq10 so there's an easy fix for this just take CoQ10. And that actually works pretty well. So most of the studies where they give CoQ10 uh, to patients with muscle pain associated with statins, the muscle pain does tend to decrease quite a bit, but usually it doesn't decrease all the way. Um, so for example, the patient that I was seeing was already taking CoQ10 for a month or two before he saw me because he read online that that, that would be beneficial for him for his muscle pains. It seemed like it might have helped a little bit, but it definitely didn't get rid of all of his muscle pain. And that brings me to number two on why statins can cause muscle pain, which is cholesterol, which they're blocking the production of directly. They inhibit the enzyme that blocks the production of cholesterol. Cholesterol is needed for all of our cell membranes. So within our muscle cells, the cell membranes require cholesterol to be inserted into them between the fatty acids so that they stay malleable and flexible. And so they, when they stretch and deform, the, the membranes don't get uh, injured or oxidized in any way. So it acts as a protective mechanism and a way for the, muscle, for the membranes to stay fluid and flexible. So when you deplete the muscle cells of cholesterol because you're not making it anymore, then the cell membranes are more susceptible to damage. And so you don't recover well enough from exercise. And if you get an injury, a muscle injury, it might not repair like it should have. Uh, so what else can you do for this? Well, there's not a whole lot of options. You can't really replace the cholesterol with anything else because it's really the cholesterol that you need. 
So in terms of the research, the other supplement that seems to work pretty well at reducing the oxidative stress that comes along with the statins, with that, what I mean by that is because of how the statins affect the cell membrane, the cell becomes more susceptible to oxidative stress or oxidative injury, whether from exercise or even from just daily living. So the other supplement that can help with that is L-carnitine. The type you want to take for that is L-carnitine L-tartrate. And unfortunately, there haven't been any long-term human randomized controlled trials that have looked into this. But there are a number of rodent studies that are showing promise that the combination of CoQ10 and L-carnitine are both beneficial together to treat the muscle symptoms and to decrease the oxidative stress. And L-carnitine actually helps to decrease the stress that can occur to the liver and kidney tissue as well. Uh, and then there is um, a bunch of genetic data out there now showing that people with uh, genetic, predisp uh, genetic predispositions that inhibit the ability to, to produce their own L-carnitine uh, to a good enough extent. So we all have these carnitine transporters inside our cell. And if we don't produce enough of those, then those people seem to be especially susceptible to the muscle pain that comes along with statin use. So there is that human link there where a genetic deficiency in L-carnitine does seem to predispose the patient for muscle pain that comes with statin use. Uh, L-carnitine is a very safe supplement. It's been used for decades now at this point. Uh, of course, check with your physician. This isn't medical advice, but check with your physician before introducing these supplements into your routine. Uh, but the combination of L-carnitine and CoQ10 seem to work really well. Um, now, there's, there's two different forms of CoQ10. There's ubiquinol and ubiquinone. But ubiquinone is the one that's more used more often in the research for supplementing CoQ10. Uh, and a lot of studies have gotten positive results with ubiquinone, but ubiquinone is actually the oxidized form of CoQ10. So the body has to convert it back to ubiquinol before it can really utilize it to the full extent. Uh, there was a human study where they tested the difference between ubiquinol and ubiquinone at increasing whole body uh, and cellular levels of CoQ10. And ubiquinol got the best results. Ubiquinone only increased ubiquinone levels, but ubiquinol increase, increased both ubiquinol levels and ubiquinone levels and increased both of them way more than the ubiquinone supplement did. So if, if you want to uh, actually look, at, look up those studies, I'm going to link them below the video here on YouTube. Uh, if you're not viewing this on YouTube and you don't see the studies, click the video, go to YouTube, and you'll see the studies posted below that I'm talking about. Um, if you want to skip all of these statin side effects altogether, there is another option out there for you, and that's niacin. Uh, actually, that's not the only other option. I could there's there's like ten other options you have to lower cholesterol uh, naturally besides statins. But one of the most powerful that's been used for decades now and has a a good safety record is niacin. The one, the one thing you'll hear about physicians saying about niacin, if you ask them about it, why, why wouldn't I choose niacin over a statin, is mainly because they associate niacin with liver side effects. Uh, the reason that niacin gives liver side effects is due to it depleting methyl groups in the liver. If you restore those methyl groups with another supplement, it negates the liver side effects of niacin. Um, if you're interested in this approach, instead of taking statins, or you want to, you know, want to switch from statins to niacin because of muscle pain or any other side effect you're having, uh, I linked also an article I wrote below, below the video on YouTube here uh, that will go to my website, and it talks all about how to use niacin to uh, increase your heart health, lower your cholesterol number, numbers, lower bad HDL or lower bad cholesterol LDL, increase good cholesterol HDL. Uh, and it talks about all of that and specifically how to supplement with niacin um, so that you don't get any side effects from niacin as well. Uh, but that is another option out there for you. Um, so if you've had any type of muscle pain from statins or you're having any type of symptoms with uh, working out or muscles or fatigue or anything like that, definitely give these two supplements a try. If you have any comments or questions, 
please write them below. I will always respond to them. I look forward to hearing from you guys. I hope this helps and stay healthy.